oh yeah, well Michael, I can go do sales. That's not hard. I can definitely but reply not gonna... to emails. <laughs> yes, yes. You know, I could. Well, Dalton, are you gonna do that? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Dalton Plus Michael. Today we're going to talk about, do you need a business co-founder? So many of you have seen our video, do you need a tech co-founder? I think we can summarize that as, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, a far more complicated question. Do you need a business co-founder? It would seem like these are, you know, yeah, okay. one-on-one. -on -one. Why are we making this video? Why, why, do, why, why is this an interesting question? I think the short answer, is yes, asterisks. And nice. I think this comes down to definitions. Yes. What does it mean to be a non-technical founder? And so if we define this as, does every startup need one person who can't code, full stop? The answer is, of course, no, that is, what? why would you even ask that question? No, but like, I think people <laughs> think, like, I think we think that. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, like, yeah, we'll explain, we'll, yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. break this down. <laughs> yes. And so let's talk about the asterisks. So basically, every company has stuff that needs to happen. Yes. Right? And so to enumerate some of the tasks that need to happen that yep. are not related to, to writing code, yep. let's enumerate some of these. Incorporation. Yes. Bank. Yes. Payroll. Like, yes. You know, bureaucratic filling out forms, paying taxes every year. Back right? office. The back, back office. Whatever you want to call it. Someone's yes. got to do that. If not, yes. you are breaking the law. Yep. So That's a problem. <laughs> so someone has to do that. <laughs> yes. Talking to customers. Someone has to talk to a customer. You don't need to know how to write code to talk to a customer, right? They do not, no. So someone needs to do that. Yes. Hiring people, that's not writing code, but you have to interview people, whatever, right? People won't just show up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sales is a really important one. We talk about this a lot. If yes. no one on the team considers it their job to do sales, we have a problem. No sales will happen. Right? And someone that doesn't know how to code could do sales. Yep. Fundraising is another one. Do you need to know how to code? Two fundraise? No. Negative. Customer support as well. Totally. Like replying to email. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Yes. And so the point is, as we're enumerating all these, anyone that is a founder could be doing these yes. and is qualified to do it. Yes. But a technical co-founder is just as qualified to do these tasks as a non-technical co-founder. These are smart human tasks. Yeah. Smart generalist tasks. And so... We have seen lots of cases where everyone on the team may have a technical degree. Yes. But there's still a clear, someone knows they have to do this stuff. Yes. Right, man? Yes. <laughs> well, I think that this is what's so interesting is that it's much easier for a technical person to do things that just require general intelligence than it is for a business person to learn how to code. Indeed. <laughs> As a business person, <laughs> I can attest to this fact. But I think that, you know, you've brought up a really good point. Um, having the ability to do these tasks is different from having the appetite to do these tasks. Yes. And to do them well. And let's triple underline that word, appetite. Yes. It's not, oh yeah, well, Michael, I could go, you know, yeah. do sales. That's not hard. I can definitely but reply gonna... to emails. <laughs> yes. yes. You know, I could. Well, Dalton, are you going to do that? <laughs> long I pause. A, I long mean, pause. I, mean, maybe, I think you should look into that. Yes. <laughs> I think this is extremely important, right? And I think that when we're looking into this question, we have to ask ourselves, like, who is going to adopt these tasks and responsibilities? It can be a technical person. It can be a non-technical person. You need someone on your founding team who's willing to adopt these tasks and do them well. Yeah, with vigor, yes. with excitement, yes. with like, yes. they want to be the best in the world at those tasks yes. and not begrudgingly no. full of excuses why they no. don't want to do it or that work no. is beneath them or whatever, yes. right? Bringing toxicity into the company. <laughs> like, no, not that. I also think what's interesting is that if you are a technical person and you happen to be solving your own problem, the idea that you would need a business co-founder is not only um, confusing because, you know, let's say you're building a dev tool, like the, your business co-founder probably is not the right person to sell or fundraise or Indeed. hire or talk to customers. Yeah. <laughs> um, so literally, the idea that you couldn't do those tasks is actually silly. Like a technical person should be doing those tasks. Yes. And if you're solving your own problem, it's a technical problem, like... It's kind of a no-brainer that you yeah. don't need a business co-founder. Maybe you need another co-founder. I mean, this is an example, you know, we'll talk about examples a little bit later, but like, yeah. if you look at something like NVIDIA, yeah. 
all of the founders were technical. All of them were electrical engineers with, you know, yeah. master's degrees or something in electrical engineering. When you think about it, how could a business person with no technical background even come up with the idea for an NVIDIA or been in a position to execute on it versus an electrical engineer? Yeah. And so the CEO of NVIDIA, I don't think he spends a lot of time coding, to nope. be honest with you. No. Nope. But the fact that he was a trained electrical engineer with a history of doing electrical engineering. Probably with helped. A, with a specific vision of how to build a new yes. CPU company, excuse me, GPU company. Yeah. Um, that seems important, right? Seems important. <laughs> I don't know if a, a non-tech founder would have helped NVIDIA way back in the day. No. Um, and certainly, if they would have helped, it's not obvious they would have been essential. Correct. And so I think that um, this idea, oh, the business person, the MBA is essential, I, that's not, like, it's possible that the technical person is essential and the business person's not essential. I think the other thing that we think about a lot is Let's say you don't want to believe our theory, here, right? Talk about <laughs> theory. Let's say uh, uh, theory, right? I don't like this because this is not flattering to me, Michael. I'm yes, <laughs> I don't like what you guys are saying because yeah, it yeah, exactly doesn't help me. Um, <laughs> you could just look at big companies and ask yourself: Do there exist big companies that have only technical founders? What would you say to that question? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> let's look at the most valuable companies on the stock market. Google is obviously two technical founders. Yes. NVIDIA, we just talked about, is all yes. technical founders. Yes. Microsoft was two technical founders when they started. Pretty viable company. Pretty valuable company. Yes. So wait, that's of the most valuable companies in the world. That's three of them so far. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, Facebook is complicated about who's counted as a co-founder or not. Yep. But like, you know, Zuckerberg was a technical founder and Moskovitz yes. and all that. And then if you look in the YC portfolio, you know, Stripe. Yep. Dropbox. Yep. <laughs> There's a theme here, friends. Yeah. So sometimes I like to say, like, hey, even if you don't want to believe these theories, you know, you could just look it up. Yeah. Right? If this is your question, do I need a business co-founder? You could just look it up and be like, well, if Google yep. didn't need one. Yeah. But the people will be able to point to other examples. Yeah. And that's fair. We're not... <laughs> we're not this saying is that not, you shouldn't have one. This we're is, saying you don't need it. Yes. This is, we're not arguing this is the exhaustive truth. Yeah. We're just saying it is not absolutely necessary and we are providing proof of said argument. And furthermore, if you're using this as an excuse to not make forward progress, yep. that's kind of bullshit. And here's a, here's a corollary to this, is sometimes we see when you're selling into an industry where a non-technical founder has does have industry expertise and knows the language of their customer, yes. that can be very helpful. Again, I'm not arguing yes. necessary. Yes. Smart people can learn anything, yes. in my opinion, okay? But imagine you wanted to sell uh, legal software. Sure. If you had one of the founders who, instead of learning how to code in college, they went to law school and they were a practicing attorney and they knew how to sell to attorneys. That could help. That sounds pretty legit. That could help. Right? Yeah. Let's say that you're selling software to doctors and hospitals. It might help that there's someone who's a doctor or yeah. maybe you're making a prescription drug or maybe you're making a drug distribution company. Like, yep, might help. What I will say, though, is that, like, don't let yourself be held back by these fake limitations. Yeah. Like, th th these are fake. Limitations. I think that's such a great way to, like, close off this thinking. I think the reason we got a lot of requests to do this video, yeah. I think it was from technical founders. Yeah that had been told by like investors, or MBAs. You, need, yes. you need a business founder yes. and are tr kind of looking for our advice about that or like they're not really sure. Yeah. And I think a lot of times when investors give a founder that feedback, which is you need a business co-founder, yeah. they're actually giving you direct feedback yes. on what yes. they see as a deficiency in your appetite to do the work. Yes, <laughs> yes. In a polite way. Or, or, <laughs> or the quality that you did the work. The quality of your pitch or the quality of how you set up your your, yeah. your, your company. Uh, but that doesn't mean you don't have the skills to do it. Yeah. yeah. Like if you meet with someone and they're like, I don't want to do sales. I hate doing sales. Sales is bad. No. A lot of advice would be, yeah, maybe yeah. you should get a non-tech founder, right? Well, by the way, that's why I hate that advice because that advice is suggesting the solution versus telling you the problem, which is like, hey, you might have to talk to your customer. <laughs> like, you don't seem like you like that. That's going to screw you. There are many ways of solving that. You That's could correct. you could learn to like it. You could hire someone who does. You could hire an engineer who does. Yep. You can hire. Um, but I do think that don't believe this idea that there's some magic with like one business person plus one tech person equals yeah, that's right. startup win. No, no. And, and I think along these lines, sometimes people have a lot of pushback of our advice on why you need a co-founder. Full stop. 
There but you. our argument is not, you need a business co-founder to teach you business because they went to business school. No. It's just that this is so hard, you need another person to go through this experience with. Yes. It's not that there's any one particular bit of experience that is necessary. Right, man? Like, 100% <laughs> you need someone to offer emotional support because this thing is going to be hard. Yeah. Yes. Yes. All right. Good chat. Sounds good. Thanks, man.